when someone asks you how do you manage your infrastructure or how do you automate your infrastructure use definitely the keyword called infrastructure as a code to score that brownie point hey what's up guys my name is gk before i go into the content please do click on the subscribe button to not to miss awesome content and also do click on the like button for the youtube algorithm so by end of this video you're going to learn what is infrastructure as a code you know what problems it is trying to solve and don't miss the last part of the video because i'm going to give you two tools that are very important for you to learn and practice for any devops interview or any cloud interview when it comes to infrastructure management infrastructure as a code is the management of infrastructure like your network your load balancer uh, you know databases uh, vms or software back in those days if i have to deploy a three tier um, stack or a two tier stack right so a three tier stack is nothing but you have a web server app server and a database let's say you know we have to deploy this so what we used to do is that we used to create a database at first and then we create uh, the application server and the web server independently and we try to connect through the configurations we used to do the same thing in dev qa and prod so often what used to happen is that the configuration that you see in qa or in prod there will be some subtle changes because you know if let's say that we deployed in qa and there was a mistake that we did we wanted to avoid we would do in prod so we are creating a lot of snowflakes so that are not consistent across the environments so now to find that issue that happened in qa it was impossible for us to go through the servers and and find the configuration files now that's the main problem that infrastructure as a code is trying to avoid so as we have discussed in my previous video when it comes to devops you do ci cd for your code right you deploy the code you do configuration management and then you also build the code so as part of the devops practice itself infrastructure as a code will help you to create the whole infrastructure as part of the code and then make it as part of your pipeline so for example let's say that i have to deploy a 3 tier stack with iac principles right so what i will do is i will write the whole configuration the whole deployment um, automation in a file uh, it could be yaml or json or whichever uh, you know the tool supports and then put it in the git and we can versionize uh, that file so now you can say that whatever changes that were there in qa or dev or prod you would know basically what happened exactly through the you know through the git process or uh, through the uh, commit commit history and stuff so that will help you to maintain the same configuration across different environments along with uh, idem potency making sure that the same state is maintained like typically you would see this idem potency concept in the configuration management tools like ansible or puppet right so along with that so iac also you know solves the problem for the developers because they can use this code so the deployment uh, yaml file or, or json file to create the infrastructure and and to test it against the like, prod like environment in their dev or in their uh, qa so teams who implement iac can rapidly scale and deploy their infrastructure so the whole concept of iac revolves around devops and cloud the reason for that is it helps you know uh, the devops principles like the dev and operations for faster deployments because without iac you cannot uh, achieve your velocity in the terms of going faster to production or faster to uh, you know to the customer because you cannot manually deploy your infrastructure if i have to explain you how infrastructure as a code um, in real time works with the ci cd pipeline is something like this so whenever developer commits the code right in git it it is the code is built and in jenkins or in any orchestration tool basically jenkins or team city like we have discussed in my previous videos so this orchestration tool will pick up the infrastructure as a code uh, file which is a uh, which is yaml file or json file so let's say that we are doing it in aws we might end up using cloud formation template the template could be in any format if we are deploying in google cloud we would use google cloud's deployment manager so basically based on the tool uh, we pick up the file and jenkins will try to uh, deploy the code i mean deploy the infrastructure or create the, uh, so jenkins will try to create the infrastructure and then deploy the code you know that way you are trying to do uh, ci cd along with iac now if there are situations where we have used one specific iac for qa right because most of the times you don't have to maintain the same prod like environment for qa or for dev because prod they might have um, higher uh, images of uh, instances because you know the traffic is more 
and in QA you might have uh, less instances. So you can create different files like you know uh, QA. Uh, you can tag that file or the deployment file with the QA. You can also tag that deployment file with prod and dev. That way, from Git you can pick up whatever file you want to deploy for a specific environment. Now let's discuss about the important tools in the market for infrastructure as a code. So I'll categorize this into two parts. So one part is cloud and the other part is cloud agnostic tools. When we talk about cloud, if you take AWS as an example, CloudFormation is a service that helps for, your, for us to do the infrastructure as a code. And in Google, it is deployment manager. And maybe in next videos, I'll discuss about the deployment manager as well and how to use that to deploy, to create your infrastructure. And in cloud agnostic solutions, let's say you want to deploy in multiple clouds or you want to manage your on-prem infrastructure and as well as cloud infrastructure. So that's when one popular tool which is commonly used and widely used in the market is Terraform. You, with Terraform you can manage, you, you can um, provision resources on Google, AWS as well as your um, on-prem services or your on-prem infrastructure. The other famous tool is Vagrant which I've used much before, I haven't used it recently, but that's also pretty much like you know you can provision um, multiple uh, cloud service providers. So they have inbuilt libraries for, for you to just use those libraries and provision the infrastructure. Now there are other categories of tools, for example, um, Ansible, Puppet, or Chef, um, you know, CF Engine. So these tools are actually configuration management tools, but they can also manage your infrastructure, which means that you can use Ansible to create infrastructure as well. You can create VMs in GCP, you can provision other services in GCP. So you can also maintain an automated uh, way of uh, managing the infrastructure and you know, version, uh, so version controlling the files or the Ansible files and putting them as part of your infrastructure as a code inside Git. Uh, now, the main thing. Now, if you were to pick the two tools, I would personally pick Terraform and Ansible. So for Ansible, I gave you enough reasons why it is important in my previous video. And uh, obviously Terraform is a new tool which I haven't discussed before. Uh, I'll, I'll try to create some videos on Terraform. But the reason why Terraform is so important, because you know in, in future when we uh, try to provision multiple clouds, you know, infrastructure, or when we're trying to work around uh, different environments, then uh, it, it helps you to consistently maintain through one tool. So let me know in the comment section if you find this video useful and let me know which tool if you have already known and if you have used it before. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching and I hope it was helpful and please do click on the subscribe button. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.